Welcome back to the channel. If you're joining us for the first time, we are Mark and Debs from the Isle of Man. Join us on the last leg of our UK adventure where we travel to Anglesey and arrive on a site that doesn't quite look like it did in the brochure. Who knew there was two Pennybomb farms in Anglesey? We didn't. We headed off in search for the site which is just 38 minutes away from Snowdonia National Park. The campsite we are looking for is Pennybont Touring Park. Having made really good time we arrived at Pennybont Campsite. You know when you get that feeling that it doesn't look anything like it did on the website? With no one around to ask and no signs for reception or check-in, it was time to head to the farmhouse to sort out checking in. So off Debbie goes into the farmhouse to confirm our two night booking. After speaking to the father of the owner of the campsite and a little bit of effing and jeffing on his part, he phoned his son in France and found out we hadn't booked and we were in fact at the wrong campsite. After driving round Anglesey another couple of times, we finally arrived at the second Pennybomb farm, which definitely looked a bit more like it did on the website. Morning peeps, we arrived at Anglesey yesterday. Penny Bont Farm, didn't we? From Penny Bont Farm we arrived at. Drama. We set off from Snowdonia Park and thought it would be a half hour trip. We did do a diversion to the Tesco Superstore which then took about three quarters of an hour. Yeah, somebody got in the, the shop and moved, didn't you? Yeah, so I did buy a few things. Anyway, so back in the van we thought, oh, it's just half an hour. Well, we left Snowdonia Park at 12 o'clock, just yeah. gone 12, quarter past 12. Got to this campsite at about quarter to four. We got to the right campsite at quarter to four. <laughs> we went round in circles, didn't we? Yes. On the way to here. And finally got here at uh, quarter to four. So half the day had gone, but we're here and it's horrible weather today. Horrible, it's absolutely lashing down there. We've got soaking wet and as you can see the dogs are They are not drunk. amused. The Cavachons really don't like rain. They're not happy. But they had to go out. So I've had the hairdryer on it. But they didn't like that. So now they're sulking. These two are very upset. <laughs> very upset, aren't you? So I don't know what we're gonna do today. I might do my nails. Because these are alright. But these aren't so windy last night. The van was rocking. Because of the wind. <laughs> rocking because of the wind. Before anyone needs a comment. Yeah. Anyway, bye for now. Off to do my nails. That's the best hand. Done! That's what you do on a rainy day in the van. You mess about for hours and you do your nails. I'm going to do mine in a minute. Whatever. Done anyway. We're going to take our life in our hands. Stop raining, mm. so we're going to take three dogs along the pavements. <laughs> Mark is definitely not the dog whisperer. It's showing people the site. So it's a very well kept site, isn't it? Yeah. It's immaculate. There's like, just not much in the area, is there? No. Downside to it would be for us, we can't really let our dogs off anywhere because, well, we'd like to exercise them in the field here because it's lovely, but probably because of the small minority not picking up the dog shit, it's probably made it bad for others, but. Over there is marshland and Una would be in her element. You know, with dirty dogs, you can't really let them off, can you? No, she'd be straight in the no. marsh. And we don't even know if it's safe, the water, do you know what I mean? It's, there could be sinking sand, anything. It's a lovely sight, but I wouldn't come back because there's nothing in the area. Nothing within walking distance, is there? No. There's not, but uh, I wouldn't mm. come rushing back to Anglesey, would you? 
we haven't seen any of it. That's we that's... have. We drove around it enough. <laughs> <laughs> what no. are we having for tea tonight? I'll tell you what we're having for tea. If it was up to Debbie. We'd be having nothing. We're having a packet. I of was crisps. busy looking at Instagram. But I am cooking homemade chicken tikka. I've just finished peeling the spuds and put the chips in the oven. Oh. And I'm also doing some halloumi. No, he hasn't. He's got Tesco's finest oven cooked chips. Chicken tikka, chips and halloumi is a bit of a side to go with it. So it's a bit of a, I don't know, it kind of goes, doesn't it? The only reason we're having halloumi mm. was because the date was today on it, so we've yeah. got to use it up. And use... it's stuff mm. out the fridge because we've just had a mass like, our oh, fridge is just packed all the time, isn't it? Shocker, we've got to get rid of some food. Yeah, so that's what we're having. It's a lazy dinner, really. Bang it in the oven and out. <sighs> And when we've got 10 minutes to go, I will get the halloumi frying in the Ridge Monkey. Oh, well let's have a look at how the Ridge Monkey performs, because when I did halloumi in the Ridge Monkey, I spilt like stuff all over the cooker. There was, it was everywhere. We need to sort this out. And... But this cheese doesn't look as runny, because the other stuff was in a packet and it was all like, it was all had juice with it. With it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Don't you rub your feet while I cook your dinner? Don't See how good nice. I am to this one. I don't know why. Because he loves me. We have had wine and John Not Smith. Enough. John Smith. That's what's taking all the bloody room up in the fridge. I haven't got any. You knew John Smith. I need to get some more. We'll go and get some then. Oh, and while you're there, you might as well do the toilets. It's a blue job, darling, and you said you've got 25 minutes till dinner. I say women should do the toilets. I think they should muck in and help out. You know, no sex is here. I'm cooking. I clean. I've hoovered. I, so have I. Yeah. I have driven. You've done Instagram. Over a hundred miles. You've done Facebook. I am the media marketing director and I'm too busy to do the blue job. So go and do the blue job. You're not the director in this. I am, right? I have to do everything around here. We did film walking across the field when we were talking, but it was so windy you couldn't hear our voices, so we've decided to do a voiceover and just show you what's at the other end of the campsite. Well, we just arrived at the oyster catcher at Rosnagir. Yep, we're just going to go in and uh, get a little bit of lunch. Ruby's coming with us, isn't she? Yeah. Come on, Rubes. There's a lot of doggies in here. That's good. It's a lovely place. We might be able to take a walk on the beach late. I think the path to the beach is there. Yeah. Yep, just there. Definitely recommend a visit to the Oyster Catcher. The car park's massive for motorhomes and the food was delicious. Pat's shack was the only one that was open when we were there, but that was enough. We had a brilliant dish of prawns and prawn sauce and really, really nice, tasty seafood. We didn't take much footage in there because of the lights flickering. I can imagine on a, on a sunny, sunny day in the summer, it will get absolutely mobbed there. So I don't know whether you book, but if you do have to book, I would recommend doing it. So we're on Rosnagir Beach, just near the Oyster Catcher. It's a beautiful beach. Reminds me of the Isle of Man, actually, with the airs.
just like that, we're back in Liverpool and the two week holiday is over. We're back on the boat and off to the sunny Isle of Man. next time when we share with you one of the prettiest places on the island, Port Erin, where Mark really is in deep sh**. If you haven't seen any of our UK road trip, clicking on this video will take you to the start of our UK adventures. If you've enjoyed our video and would like to see more, hit that subscribe button, it's completely free and really helps our channel grow. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.